So ladies and gentlemen, today we are going for potentially a world's first I've never seen it done, and that is a mystery tackle box slam with a fly rod, and he just bumped it right off the bottom. Let's land this fish, please. MTB Slam, fourth day. That might be the fly rod PV right there. That's a big one. Y'all have seen the MTB Slams on the baitcaster. This might be something a little different. We'll see you. <laughs> Got him. Fish. No way. There he is. First fish, yes. There he is. First one on the jig. Got him. No. No. We have him. What's going on y'all? Welcome back. Today we are breaking out our new Seaborn Outfitters Fly Rod and Reel Combos. Mm. Yes. Five weight and an eight weight. We're stopping at Orvis to start things off and get these things spooled up with some line. Probably about to spend 200 bucks on some fishing line because you know how this fly line gets expensive. So if you would already, go ahead and drop a like on this video for that. Let's go ahead and get inside. Welcome back to the channel everyone. It is Weston Smith and I feel like we've been starting every vlog inside this truck lately so let's go ahead and get outside the truck and tell you about today's sponsor Mystery Tackle Box. Ladies and gentlemen today we are going for potentially a world's first I've never seen it done on the interwebs and that is a Mystery Tackle Box Slam with a fly rod and we're also joined by none other than Christian. You have seen him in the past but it's been a little while we're getting out. Uh, he's been trying to tell me hey come hit the skate park up with me at least we got to kick it. And I've been having this uh, bulging disc in my lower back, man. One of these days, recently, I was pulling the John boat out of one of the ponds, and I felt this tweak, so I thought. Turns out it was a little bit more than a tweak after an MRI. I got like this four millimeter bulging disc. It's hitting the nerves or whatever you'd say, right? It's like the L5S1. Regardless, we're going for a mystery tackle box slam. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We are gonna be fishing. The eight weight and five weight combos we received from Seaborn Outfitters. Big shout out, check them out. Brand new local Texas-based fly company. I probably won't even post this video unless I catch a fish on every single bait inside of the box, because I really want to go big on this one. By the way, before I become the most hated fly fisherman in all of the industry, uh, this one is just for entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. This video right here is strictly for your viewing pleasure. This is not the type of stuff you want to be throwing on a fly rod. This is not the type of stuff you should be throwing on a fly rod. We are doing this because YouTube. We're gonna hopefully provide some tips and tricks on these baits. Also, we recently completed this same box, this month's slam, with traditional or conventional gear, right? We used our bait casters, spinning rods, etc. So if you wanna see the alternative perspective, check that video out. Let's go ahead and get to fishing. We got plenty of time. What are you gonna be throwing today? See what I got tied on. You got you got it all. Plopper. Lipless. Yep. Jiggy jig. jig. And then drop shot. Ah, this is the last the drop <laughs> shot. We know the drop shot all too well when it gets to be winter time. What's funny though is Christian was telling me that they're hitting top water out here. Midday. Midday. The water's been cooling off, man, and I've been having not as much luck with top water. But if that's a fact, I want to throw that thing on the fly rod too. Let's have at it. All right, y'all, we're rigging up. Check out what is in the box. If you saw the slam on the casting gear, you already know because it's the same thing. Slightly different colors, I think, on some of these, which is actually a good thing because Christian knows the spot pretty well, and he was telling me that these shad patterns work out uh, fantastic at this location. I think I'm going to start off with the jerk bait because of that, which leads me to my next problem, and that is going to be, for one, casting, really everything, but with the fly rod. It's going to be super weird, super awkward. We've also got a jig in here, and then uh, I might have to do a T-rig on some of this stuff which, you know, very unorthodox. The comment section is not gonna be my friend today and I don't care. If y'all would like to know the full setup here, this is that Seaborn Brackwater combo. This is the eight weight, this is a nine foot, right? Sinking fly line, it's a S7, so I believe that means it's a sinks it's at a rate of seven inches per second, which is uh, not necessarily ideal for a jerk bait. Honestly, floating line would probably be better, but y'all already knew that. So anyways, we're gonna get this thing started. This is gonna be the biggest challenge of our fly fishing YouTube career, I would estimate. Yeah, this is not gonna work. Oh wow, this is gonna be tricky. This thing sinks fast. 
Might be a little bit of a deep diver for this little pocket. I think we're moving on after one cast. Fish on. Oh no! Literally thought I had a fish. Yeah, so Christian basically told me jerk bait's like one of the worst baits for this place because there's so much grass. But what I'm finding is if I just fish like the worst fly fisherman in the world and I leave my rod tip way up high with the sinking fly line, it doesn't get a chance to sink. And I can actually manage to get this thing to pop and look pretty good and stay above the grass. And so we're just figuring this thing out one cast at a time. Three hours later. We might have our work cut out for us today. Worst part about this is I could give this jerk bait like a 10 second pause if I was using the floating line. Like I could wait for a fish to decide to come hit it, but because I'm using this sinking line, I put myself at a disadvantage. The thing is, I don't think the five weight can cast this jerk bait. <laughs> at least this eight weight can throw some flies that are as heavy as this jerk bait. All right, y'all, spot number two. Spot one wasn't panning out for uh, the old jerk bait. This water is looking so clear right now. I'm thinking we'll be able to get one fairly quickly. And if not, it's just, it's just not the jerk bait staying. We're gonna tie something else on pretty quick. All right, y'all, we're back out here on day two. Day one, nothing happened except we learned how to fish these baits a little bit. Christian, however, did catch a slew of fish on the drop shot by the time the day was over but we cannot catch squats. So we're out here day two. There's gonna be two negatives today. One is that it's pretty dadgum windy. And we all know it makes fly fishing a little bit more tough as far as the casting goes. As far as the bite goes though, hopefully it's spiced up. Then I'm gonna be using the five weight today instead of the eight weight. I haven't caught fish on either one of these new Seaborn combos yet. Today's the day, but I'm gonna to have to cast the five weight because it has the floating line. I found out working almost all these baits yesterday that that sinking line makes it very tough, specifically the jerk bait. Uh, the lipless is gonna probably sink too fast on me to even be able to bring it in. And so I'm going with the five weight specifically for the floating line. Definitely could end up ruining this rod. We're not gonna try to do that, but it could happen. It'll make the fights more fun anyways, just because it's a smaller reel. Also, I wanna hear what this textured line sounds like, almost like braid maybe when you're fighting fish. It's got that like supercharger whine when you cast. It's so sick. I'm fishing a real fishy spot. I catch fish here most times I visit. Got him, no! I don't wanna jinx myself, but hopefully today is the day and we can get some fish on the bank with the fly rod fishing mystery tackle box. Okay, once again, I do not encourage this behavior. If you're gonna be throwing a mystery tackle box, it should be on conventional gear. With that being said, let's rock. Yeah, this floating line is so much better for the jerk bait. My hook sets, I don't really know with treble hooks if I should just lift the rod or if I should like strip set it. So I'm probably gonna do a combination of both. It's not gonna look pretty. When the moment strikes, we'll see what my reaction is. First fish, yes, jerk bait, got him. Finally. Wow, it's been a minute. Oh man. Jerk bait on the fly rod. Get out of here. It took a day and a half. I've been fishing this thing for almost 45 minutes. <laughs> but we made it happen. Oh sheesh. I would take a story, but I think I left my phone in the truck on accident. That rarely ever happens. And there you have it, y'all. It can be done. Look at this. I can't even get a picture on the phone because I don't have it with me. <laughs> I will take that. That is one towards the slam. Thank Try and block that wind. Thank you, buddy. We'll see you next time. Genuinely funny. They said it couldn't be done. We are definitely going to give this thing the old college try. Should I throw the lipless next because I had success with that? Or should I just go straight to like... I feel like I need to go to a T-Rig or something. Oh, the jig. This thing is a little heavy for the five weight, but um, oh well. Next up is a bottom bait. I'm predicting this is gonna be easier, but then again, these fish are acting some sort of way this week. They are very slow. After all the cold days we've had, the water is getting chilly. Oftentimes they're just less active, you know, warmer water, their metabolism's speeding up a little bit. They need to eat a little bit more. They're more comfortable. They get a little lethargic in that cold water and it can be tough to get a bite, but I'm thinking a jig can do it. So, let's see. Let's make a cast into uncharted territory. What do we got over beyond door number two here? Any fish in that thing? Has he got it? I've got one, I've got one. Oh my gosh, I had a fish on. Wow, wow. And I instantly see what they talk about with textured line. That never hurt until I went for a strip set just then and it like burned me quick. So this is like, there's a texture to it. It's not just smooth. Complaint a lot of folks have with this despite the extra casting distance you might get using, using typical fly gear there he is 
First one on the jig. Got him. No. No. We had him. Oh, these strip sets are bad. Lost that one on the jig, y'all. It is so windy. I decided let's make a move. We're going to catch a big one. We're over here at a big fish spot. We're going to make our little trek back to the pond, see if we can get one or two or three or complete the slam before sunset. It's going to be tough, but here we go. Okay, I just saw bait breaching the surface, which means I think these bass are chasing little shad or crappie or something like that, which means I'm breaking the jerk bait back out. Well, I think I was wrong. Or maybe the bait is a smaller presentation or not as shad looking. I don't know. We're going to try the lipless now. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to hit you guys with that double hand retrieve. I don't know if you've seen me do, but it's uh, learned it from Gunner Brammer and it is quite tricky. I think it's going to be the only way I can bring this thing in without uh, it hitting the bottom. Constant steady retrieve. We'll see. The upside is normally lipless crankbaits cast phenomenally, so maybe this thing will just cut through the wind and be real nice on this rod who knows lipless engage oh wow these treble hooks are gonna get so stuck together this may not work at all i guess the floating line does help it not completely sink super fast fish no way no way double hand retrieve come on come on God, I'm on the lipless. There's no way. First time ever hitting the double hand retrieve. Yes. Oh, no. Wow. What is the curse with this five weight rod? I can't catch fish. Just had a big one chase in. There he is. There he is. He's on. He's on. What do we got? Feels good. Sick on the lipless, y'all. Come on, let's get this one on the reel. Got him. Come on, that's a good fish, y'all. Oh my gosh. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish. This might be the same one we just saw chasing it. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. 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 On the lipless double handed retrieve. There's no freaking way. What on earth? Thank you, Mr. Retackle Box. I was worried about that strip set too, because it's there's like no way to do it but strip set when you're doing that double hand retrieve, but I was still worried after that last fish came off. Jeez Louise. What a fish. Holy smokes. Insane. So many firsts on this one here. MTB slam. So sick, y'all. I'm so pumped to get that catch before sunset with a different style retrieve that I can utilize in the streamer world and real fly stuff. <laughs> yeah, with the lipless crankbait. I don't want to put this down. I'm going to fish this until I got to go. What if we break our fly rod PB tonight, y'all? All it takes is like a four pounder. If we're close to a four, we'll probably still beat it. I've got the scale in here. It's just a matter of if I'm going to have to break it out. That guy was about three pounds. Insane. So much more efficient once I figured out, I just need to leave the perfect amount of line out so it doesn't get wrapped around this rod a million times. Now I can just literally cast and retrieve. It's like almost as efficient as a bait caster. Dare I say it, dare I say it. Oh, oh wow, it's a, it's a, it's a fish. It is literally a fit. Look, bank flips only on the five weight. It's a fish. This is um, close to insane. This is not supposed to happen. This is a lipless crankbait on a fly fishing rod and reel. I think it's time to hit that subscribe button. Either that or unsubscribe because you're a purist and you hate this and this is like really making you angry. But regardless, this isn't what we're going to be doing every video. I just had to try it. At least leave me a thumbs up. How about that? Oh my. Fish the bank. Fish the bank. Bigger. Bigger than that last one. Not as big as the first one. Oh boy. Come on. Where's my net? Where's my fly fishing net? Come on, Weston. I thought you were a fly fisherman. This is one that uh, calls for the pliers. Wow. Double-handed retrieve. I've practiced it one other time, basically. One other day. 
this is perfect. I just don't have that much line out. So I'm just kind of doing one fling and then I get straight to bringing it in. That thing hit at my feet. That was un unexpected. Super cool. One fling, get all that line out there, tuck it under the arm, pull down a little bit. This is nuts. Look at that, right back in the water. All that line out, tuck it under the arm. Didn't go far enough. Y'all can't hear nothing with this wind, I bet. This is so sick. One little haul, send her forwards. There's not even a point in doing a double haul because it doesn't really work with this bait. If it was lighter, it'd be fine. And what's really cool about this is it ensures a strip set, right? You're gonna pull into the fish with your hands rather than try and lean that rod up, which is important for bass. Got him, got him, come on. Insanity, this is actually happening. What is going on right now? All right, sir, see ya. We are catching numbers at sunset. I would not believe this if I wasn't watching this video right now. I still don't recommend you do this. Do not do this. Leave it for me, let me do it. <laughs> I'll do it for you. <laughs> I, I got you, one haul, send it. That was kind of bad, that's okay. So as I get close to the bank, and I know I can't really strip more because I want my leader to stay outside the rod tip, I kind of gave it that one little swing with the body just to kind of let it rip right next to the bank in case one's chasing it and wants to hit it right at the bank. So that's that. You see how it wraps around the fly rod? You just give it a little twirl or just kind of pull it and it comes undone. That'll happen a lot, whether you're fishing what I'm doing or not. Fish, oh, right at sunset. Nice, this might be the last one of the night, y'all. Come here, fly line. There we go. All right, might have to wrap it up till the next couple days, y'all. Here we are on day three, y'all. We are breaking out the John boat today and we nearly complete the slam. So we've got more in store after today's efforts. We just don't have enough time. It is Christmas today and we are breaking out all the goodies from the MTB. You see it right here. We catch a giant. You got a lot to look forward to. Let's go ahead and hit the water. There we go. Oh. Devin's got one, nice. First one is not on the MTB bait. <laughs> that is the dark sleeper and on casting gear. <laughs> Was he close to the... Christmas bass. Yeah, that's right. Dang. Uh, nice one. Oh, I got one. Yeah! There we go. <laughs> got one on the jig. <laughs> All right. First one on the jig and one of the craws. I don't remember which one this is. <laughs> this is the... What is this craw? I gotta check the box. Come on, game. Yeah. Okay, this was the Baiwa Warax. That's the deal. So now we got to catch one with the alternative, which is actually rigged up on this jig from the MTV box I completed with the bait caster. So that's going to make things easy. I'm just going to tie this on, and then we'll have the other bait knocked out. So are you the doing like a comparison days. or just kind of... Well, what I'm doing is trying to catch a fish on every bait out of this box, which is made for regular, like, conventional fishing gear instead of a fly rod. So it's just kind of like an entertainment video because, like, it's not supposed to be done. Oh, like it's you. not yeah but that also took care of two baits because that was this this is called a jig this came in the box and then also these craws i attached on the back of it to give it more like fishy like action uh -huh. and so i got that bait knocked out but now i'm going to use the other craw that came in the box so people get like multiple different plastics to rig up there we go y'all they're hitting the jig so we're going to try and just toss the western ring craw on there and see if i can get it and knock that sucker out and then i think all we have left is the drop shot baits well you could rig these up multiple different ways but i'm going to do a drop shot and that is going to be these soft plastic minnow jerk baits got one Dang, they are on those baits. Mm, I'm doing the wrong thing. I gotta knock this jig out. That one is bigger, huh? Just a little bit. This jig, I might need to work it like a jerk bait. <laughs> work it faster. Uh oh. You on? Yeah. Yeah. It's heavy, huh? Stay on that pedal a little bit to the right. We didn't bring the net. That's what we didn't bring. Yeah, he's like staying down. Oh. Pretty big, huh? Uh, oh, it's tough to say. Okay, he's not that big. Not that big. Gotcha. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, that one's good. Biggest one so far on the jerk bait. MTB pulling through. I definitely should not be throwing this jig. I need like I need to throw. Maybe I'm gonna break out the big game changer for an uh, intermission. Yeah, I wanna break out the game changer. <laughs> I'm gonna grab the eight weight and throw the game changer. I've still yet to catch a fish on this rod, I think. So we're taking an intermission from MTB. Devin's mom is behind the wheel now. She's got a uh, like Ned rigged baby is it a baby bandito bug that you put on there for her, Devin? So she is about to catch fish. And it's Christmas, y'all. I think it's like record high heat. It's 79 degrees right now. The high is 81, but I have a feeling if it's already 79 <laughs> and it's only 12, this thing freaking looks like a monster. Oops. 
Were you working that jerk bait pretty slow when you got? Well, I guess you're working that, and that's pretty fast. So. Uh, when I was on the jerk bait, I think I was every time I was on the pause. Mm. Okay, I got you. I'll just do the single hand then. Let it sink a little bit. Oh, got him! Okay, well, I guess I did it. <laughs> a little slower. First ever catch on the eight weight. Nice, it's a little dude that hit the seven inch game changer. He's only like seven inches himself. What the heck just happened? That's what I'm saying. Look at this. We got the Christmas special. This little dude hit the seven inch game changer and it's our first ever catch on the new eight weight. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, but yeah, we're trying to size up. Can't say what I figure this is the uh, size of the first bass on the eight weight, but especially with the big game changer. It's okay. Maybe we're just tucked away in the nursery. We're about to get back out to the big water. We're gonna catch some big ones. It's very zenful. Zen. This is what they do in the mountains. And then you just let it go. Then you just let it oh, fly. so it is just done. Let it fly. Oh, and then you pull it out. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you, when you cast it, you want it all to join up. Uh, what do you mean? Like all so? that slack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, ideally. Like, and you can even have, I could pull more line out. That way there's like, there's always extra. Because I could go all the way to the end of it, and then it's going to kind of jerk. So it's good, better to have more line out than you need. That way, if you cast really far, like it doesn't like jerk because you hit the end of the line and like tug it. Did you get sponsors for this? This stuff was free, and so this was like five hundred dollars, and it was, and a company reached out to us and gave it to us for free. So, oh, and they gave us two. You had done your fly stuff? Uh, no, this was just afterwards. So, like in the last few months of us doing these videos, we got a thousand dollars worth of stuff for free. I'm gonna try and use that jig again to complete the slam while they're back here biting. Oh, Dang, <laughs> that's two like back to back though. <laughs> pull away back to back. <laughs> Those pliers. Okay, uh, I don't see them. Oh, the pliers right here. Oh. In a safe spot. <laughs> safe. <laughs> mm. Oh. Fish. Yep. Got one on the jig. This one's a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah, biggest one of the day. Biggest one of the day for sure. Wow, on the five weight. This thing's like not that bad. Baby, this thing's not that bad. Oh wow, he's like, got me on this branch. This is not good. He like literally has me on the branch. Oh, oh, that might be the fly rod PB right there. That's a big one. It's a giant on the jig. It's a giant on the jig. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> Get the scale! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all, we're gonna have to break out the scale. That was a giant on the jig. And this is with that Weston ring crawl. That's the signature. It's not really my company, but <laughs> anyways, straight out of the MTB box. That's probably a three pounder. I mean, that's a solid fish and he just bumped it right off the bottom. I was like, am I stuck again? I've been getting caught up in all these twigs and nope, we caught us a big old fishy. That pretty much secures the slam. All we have to do is catch fish on the drop shot and that should be easy pickings. But needless to say, a big girl on the jig on the fly rod. Not supposed to happen, but you know, we make it work. All right, y'all, let's put Big Bertha on the scale. This is definitely the biggest one of the day. Could potentially be the fly rod PB. I don't think so, but we're gonna just take a gander. It is a three pounder. It's right at three and a quarter, but uh, maybe the drop shot will do it. Who knows? We're gonna try and tie that thing on, catch us one fish to complete the slam with the hook and drop shot, but otherwise, what a fish on Christmas day, y'all. This is the present right here. This is what we need. Out with the family, having some fun. broke out the John boat again for day four. Let's close this thing out. We've still got to catch one on the drop shot, meaning the minnow and the hook from the box. Let's make it happen. I found a tree. I'm just gonna jig this thing for a minute. Got him. Oh, no. Dang. Snag. She gone or not? Wow. Holy smokes, that thing was extra stuck. Well, that was a super snag, but this thing still looks good. Weird. Okay. No more trees. Three hours later. Oh, one's got it. Look at him swimming with it. Got him. Got him. Golly. 
Holy smokes, three hours later. Yo. Oh my goodness. Let's land this fish, please. MTB slam, fourth day, hours later. Stay pinned. Oh, that's good. Just give him slack. Great. Come here, bud. Ah. Yes. Yes. Devin's making fun of me. She's been catching it, uh, catching fish on the conventional gear all day. I haven't even really shown much. I've been like in depression. This has been so tough. Four days. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we got here. We missed the fish. We missed the fish on the drop shot. We've been throwing it for hours, and it's just not happening on the fly. It's harder to cast too, and so I got it snagged by the way. And I'm on my last hook from the MTB box. This was the only other Daichi hook. This is that uh, red color, and I have the. I'm gonna put him back in the water. Y'all seen him. So anyways, what I'm getting at is this was drop shotted, right? This was the, the weight on there. But I kept getting snagged and I'm like, I really don't want to lose these hooks. This is the last one I have to complete this challenge. And so I just chopped that sucker off and I treated this thing like a fluke. Probably should have been doing it from the very beginning. Devin was catching them on a little saucy swimmer, making things look easy. I tried not to give in to temptation and do the same. Just grab the conventional gear because we had to make this happen. So I was fishing them like this, right? I had that hook text posed which uh, was important when I was fishing it like a drop shot because it was more weedless, right? And I could get snagged at least a little bit less. And I'm just dragging bottom. That rod's got no feeling because it's not made for throwing that type of stuff. It's made for throwing light flies. I'm on that five weight. And so as soon as I lightened it up and tossed it without the weight as a fluke, I started noticing it was way easier to cast. It was way easier to get that double haul and really launch it further than even with that drop shot weight. And it wasn't very long. I saw some fish bursting at the surface. I casted two of them. I was actually getting bit instead of it just dropping down right past them and then not going after it. So finally, right along the reeds, we completed the MTB slam. Huge shout out to Seaborn Outfitters for hooking us up with some gear, man. I mean, these combos are all brand spanking new. Maybe you've never even heard of Seaborn Outfitters. Perfectly understandable because they are a brand new company out here in North Dallas area. We are proud to be collaborating with them and hope to have more gear in our hands from them very soon. Different weight options and outfits. So with that being said, MTB slam checked off the list. Holy smokes, four days in the making, y'all. And they're actually hooking y'all up as well. As viewers of our channel, check the link in the description to try your first box for as low as 10 bucks. You're gonna get juicy baits like the ones you saw us fishing in today's episode. Guggen Squad products frequently included in the MTB boxes, y'all. Have at it and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. There he is, first fish. Yes, jerk bait, got him. Oh, that's good. Just give him slack. Great.